All right, all right, all right. So the current status is, I got a lot of stuff cut on my current rider because it has been sold and it's being picked up on Wednesday morning. Everything here is ready to go for bending tomorrow, Monday. The smaller press brake has been sold. I'm gonna ship it probably Tuesday. Nothing's happened over there. The Kimla will be hopefully arriving on Friday, Friday as it looks. So it's gonna be all the way basically from here all the way to, to that thing basically. And I've gotten a lot of process pictures from the factory. So yeah, brace yourself. This is this is awesome. This is this makes me so happy. I can't believe I'm this blessed to be able to buy a machine like this. I'm gonna switch this over to um, screen recording so we can see this properly. Here's the machine. My God, it's been a journey. I don't know, I should make it like a whole new video about how I came to this point where I ended up buying a Kimla specifically because I looked at a lot of machines, a lot of machines and brands from all over the world. Yeah, well, uh, we'll get back to that. So the specs, you might wonder, uh, it's 1.6 meter in X and 6.1 meters in Y. It's got about 200 in Z. It's got a 12 kilowatt S1, 14 kilowatt S6 uh, HSD spindle with uh, HSK 63F tool holding. Uh, it's got a Renishaw touch probe next to the spindle that extends down below the, the spindle nose there. Can't really tell from this angle anyway. It's got linear motors and they produce those linear motors themselves in the Kimla factory in Poland. My god. Let's see if I can... Why is it not switching pictures? There we go, this is another view. Oh my god, these beams, they're so thick, the steel, it's 16 millimeters. I'll show you this. This is 16 millimeters thick. Can you believe it? So this is uh, not my video, it's theirs from the factory. I was there, had a blast, had an awesome time. I, for, for a guy like me, Jesus, this is paradise. So they have this Okuma. This is the biggest Okuma in all of Europe. And they machine all of their frames in one setup. It doesn't get better than this and the uh, linear motors it looks like this beneath the, the the bellows there this is also their video not mine so it's basically silent you can hear uh, the carts or the blocks the balls in them anyway it's got a renishaw digital scale the resolution is like a nanometer that's one billionth of a millimeter Accuracy is spec to 5 microns per meter. You'll see I have a different set of uh, linear rails on my z-axis. I also have this, this uh, suction foot if you will. It's got holes in the bottom where pressurized air comes out so that it floats on top of the surface, not scratching anything. And it, yeah, I mean, you're, you're gonna take care of 99.99% of all the chips. I'm gonna be producing basically 99% aluminum with it. Okay, so this is going too far. Anywho, so that's, that's that. Let's move on, this is my machine number. Ah! I, I also saw in the factory, they had one machine there with a prototype lead strip thing on the side. So this is actually split into two. So, so I have two sections on the machine. So there's one table here and one table there, so that if the machine's working here, I can empty and remove all the crap and prepare a new sheet and just press a button and it goes there and I do the same over here. Those LEDs, 
they indicate green and red so which zone is safe to be in mind you it does have lidar so it's not going to run into me even though if i i'm if i'm standing there so this this is in the middle of the table it's a hole uh, i wanted a hole in it because the gantry can't extend out the spindle it can't reach outside of the table so i can't clamp anything on the end there so i'm going to be able to lower things into here and work on the on the side of them um, oh it's it's so they're so awesome at building machines these guys this is this is absolute top notch this is the vacuum valves and i also added the feature of being able to open and close these with m codes not very standard they let me know but uh, no problem i got actually no idea what this is for maybe for controlling those uh, some type of transformer oh it's so thick the steel i think they jacked out of these uh, steel beams because of the pop-up pins i expect uh, not very high resolution it's a bit blurry in a way these are the, the drivers for the linear motors uh, this is the uh, the container for the ethanol Tool changer. I've gotten a lot of pictures from Jacob over there. Did an awesome job. So this is a week or two later where they have cut the table. As you can see, I've I've got a 250 millimeter wide, six meter long aluminum T-track table. This is the linear tool changer. I got two tool changers, one rotary and one linear for a total of 24 tools. Down here you see the buttons for vacuum zones and pop-up pins if I'm not using the M codes. Big, big connections for the vacuum. I got two vacuum pumps. And inside of the table, let's see if I can go back. Uh, you see this vacuum distribution tube here. So you're not gonna have any losses on the way. And vacuum goes through to these distributors up into those fat beams and then through these holes and you get these plugs so you can plug and open any ports you want to oh it's so awesome so here it is uh, getting along nicely <laughs> this I mean, look at this this is a piece of art i love this is it just me am i that crazy Yes, I am, but um, mm -hmm, you should be too. Okay, okay, you'll see, you'll see. Oh, it's so pretty. They did an excellent job on the hole. This is also a nice feature. Typically, you have these cables and pneumatic tubes going across these beams. And I didn't re request it or anything, but they made these covers and painted them and just so you won't see all of those. It looks tidier. I mean, that's that's attention to detail. I mean, this is a busy factory. They have a lot of customers. And they took the time to really make this nice. Uh, typically, they sell Becker, these dry running rotary vein pumps. But I prefer these Bush Mink pumps. They go a little bit deeper. Well. 100 millibars deeper into vacuum and they have like zero maintenance on them because they they're a rotary rotary claw type vacuum pump so um they don't they don't have any surfaces touching nothing wears really they also make these bellows themselves in the factory So there's a whole story about these pop-up pimps. I had them change these aluminum plates just so that I would have as much vacuum as close to the edge of the sheet as possible. We, we can talk about that later. Here you can see the tiny holes where the ethanol comes out. Mm-hmm. How awesome is that? This is the spindle, 12 kilowatts, that's one. There's a pen here that comes down because I, I want to mark things so I know where to put the clamps. I'm going to be 
processing six meter long um, aluminum extrusion profiles. And I really like that all the cylinders, air cylinders everywhere have these sensors, just so the controller really truly knows the position of whatever they're, they're attached to. Typically, they just activate this, the vault and it's supposed to be up and the machine just accepts that it is. Well, this is standard on, on Kimlo machines, but if you're buying a lower tier machine, typically you don't see these really nice fail-safe thing. They also make these, uh, all of these in, in the factory. At one point, we're gonna have a factory toy there, I'm just telling you. They make their own PLCs. They had to put in quite a bit of extra crap to be able to do what I wanted to. Control the vacuum zones with M codes and also the vacuum pumps. Uh, the spindle cooler and the pop-up pins, all of that stuff. So here's the, what they did, because I was kind of expecting them, when, when I told them to, I want to control the, the vacuum pumps on and off through M codes. I thought they would just point me to uh, an output on the PLC where I could do my own solution, but they, they, they really made a nice solution, ready to go. I don't need to do anything. That was not mine. This was, this was a comparison between the sizes. Here's the pump. One of them, in a way, I got two of these. They made these electrical boxes to allow them to be controlled by M codes. And I mean, they, they really, they, they so seriously, they, they have to have cut this bracket and painted it. And I mean, this was a last minute add on from my side. So it wasn't really planned from the beginning. I'm super impressed, like super impressed. Oh my God, it's so nice. He's pointing to where the lighter sits. That means you can be all over your machine anywhere because there's no moving parts. But if the gantry comes at you, then it's going to detect you. And if you're in the so-called yellow zone, it's going to slow down and hopefully you get out of the way. And if you don't, it stops until you get out of the way. Then it continues. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Look at these two. I'm such a nerd that the, these are typically, they're, they're, these are size 30 and typically the ball type. I'm really in love with the roller type. And sure, you, this is way overkill, way overkill. This is, this is like a tank. And uh, if I were to spec these everywhere, then they would need to remake the, the bellows. But there are no bellows on Z, so I said, like, well, we could put them on Z because that's maybe the most important axis because you need the most stiffness there. So they put it there. Thank you very much. Nice and tidy. This is the hole in the table. It's the spindle cooler. Uh, I think this is a low number. I've heard a higher number, but anyway, you see there's a lot of steel there. Oh my God. And it's almost finished. It's so close, so close. This is the tube where the Renishaw probe is housed. How awesome is this? You can control yourself how much air you want it to have access to. So you control the under pressure inside this uh, cup. The LiDAR. It's a sick LiDAR. Um, bop, bop. Well, that was it, basically. So, yeah. There you go. It's going to be here on Friday. Unless something changes, I got to make a few videos on this. I'm going to make a lot of videos on these. Oh my God. Anyway, I got to get going. I'm supposed to buy lunch for the kids. So um, talk to you later. Bye bye bye.